Hey, good afternoon. It's Dr. Jensen here. So today we're going to look at a few practice problems dealing with unit analysis and unit conversion. So if we look at this particular problem, um, here we have 515 kilometers, and we want to know how many decimeters is that? Okay, so generally when, when you're starting this these kinds of problems, there is some expectation that you will probably have to memorize the uh, SI units, okay? So you will have to know some something about the metric system units in general, okay? so. Here, usually the way that, that I will extract this is, you know, there may not be a direct conversion from kilometers to decimeters, and so you may take this through, through more than one step. Okay, so this particular unit analysis that you're gonna see me do here is, it's probably a little overkill for this particular kind of problem. But it works a little easier when we will look at the next couple of problems, okay? So we wanna convert the kilometers, but we don't have a direct conversion to the decimeter. So, but we do know kilometers, we do know that in one kilometer, there is a thousand meters, right? So a meter uh, is one of our kind of base units here. And then we also know that in one meter, there are 10 decimeters. Right? And so essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the top and the bottom as the equal sign, right? So I'm going to set the unit opposite here, so one kilometer, and then I'm going to say it's equal to 1,000 meters, okay? So what I'm converting from to what I'm converting to. And then in my last step here, again, one meter here is 10 decimeters. Okay. And so by setting them opposite, it helps you to kind of set up which direction or what is the next unit I need to use. This is particularly helpful, especially when you're given more than one unit at a time. There's often in complicated chemistry problems, there's a whole bunch of different units and we need to keep track of what units are doing what. Okay. So by dividing the kilometer by itself, it functionally gets taken out. And the same thing with the meter goes away, and the only unit that I'm left with is the decimeter. And so here I would multiply all the values on the top and divide all the values on the bottom, okay? So that's just the 515 times 1,000 times 10, and so we get 10, okay? So, Scientific notation, probably the best way to do this, particularly because usually on the first round, uh, as you're learning some, some of these things, usually the inclusion of things like significant figures is important. So knowing that there are three sig figs, um, there are three significant figures here in general, um, and then your answer then would have would result in three significant figures since we're multiplying and dividing. The metric system conversions are, have an infinite amount of accuracy, so we don't use them to determine the output of our, of our answer, okay? All right, so let's look at a more complicated version of this, all right? Now, the metric system conversion units, you only have to memorize once, so once you get that, right, let's get this square here. So here, once you know the linear conversion, it also works for the cubic conversion, right? So if we have 2.5 meters cubed, right? And I want to convert to centimeters cubed. Well, we know that in one meter, there's 100 centimeters, okay? So this is the single dimension, okay? That's a single dimension. But we just have to apply this to the other, th other two dimensions, or the three dimensions. And so, so you, what you end up doing is just cubing the whole conversion. 
okay? So it becomes 2.5 times 100 cubed. So when you cube it, it becomes 100 cubed, centimeters cubed, meters cubed. It cubes everything inside the, inside the parentheses, okay? And so then you get 2.5 times 10 to the sixth centimeters cubed. Yeah, again, we're multiplying everything on the top. Um, oftentimes, when you're setting these things up, don't forget to actually cube the number, okay? Just writing the cube on the outside is just the first step of setting it up. You actually have to put that in your calculator and do the cube uh, when, you, when you're solving the problem, okay? And then multiply the units on the top, divide by everything on the bottom. In this case, it's just ones, so it just becomes the 10 cubed or 100 cubed times 2.5, okay? Moving on. Okay, so here we get into more of the chemistry practical problem here. Here we use, we wanna know about the mass of ethylene glycol. So we're told we have 417 milliliters of ethylene glycol. We're given the density, and we wanna know what is the mass? Okay, what is the mass of ethylene glycol? Okay, so we know the density is mass over volume. So you can look at this in a couple of different ways. So we have the density and we have the volume. So we need to solve for the mass. So we know then the resulting equation, you know, that's a ton of volume, right? They're gonna bring this over here, you know, multiply. My puppy doesn't like this, uh, this problem. All right, so if you start out with the easiest unit, okay? The easiest unit here is the volume, okay? By easiest unit, I mean milliliter is the simplest term versus density has two terms. It has grams and has centimeters cubed. So the other thing to keep in mind here when doing these problems too, and you get used to this once you do this a few times, centimeter cubed, one centimeter cubed is one milliliter, which is also one cc, right? So in medical terms, if we're looking at a cubic centimeter, it is a cubic centimeter or a milliliter, okay? So I can basically, I can convert this directly to milliliters instead of it being centimeters cubed, right? So the density unit then would be 1.11 grams per milliliter. And I end up with my volume times my density, which then gives me 462.87 grams of ethylene glycol. Okay, multiplying the units on the top. Again, the density term, a lot of people write it as this, and so it gets confusing, but it's, it is 1.11 grams for every one milliliter, or 1.11 grams per one centimeter cubed, right? And so we're just taking this and putting it directly in there, right? The numerator and denominator stay in their same same order when we're doing the multiplication. And so the, the dimensional analysis just helps it to keep track of the units. Again, it's a little overkill, a little bit in some of these early problems, but as we work into more complicated problems, the unit analysis helps to keep track of the units that we're using so, we so that we ensure that the right units get in the right spot. Okay. All right. So last one here, practical application of this. Right, so we have a room that's 594 square feet. We have a nice tile that is seven inches by 20 inches. The question is, how many tiles do I need in order to tile this room? Okay, so you know, if you're gonna go to Home Depot or Lowe's and you're buying tile, you need to know how many tiles you buy. You know, is it a box of tiles? How many tiles are in a box? How many boxes do you need to buy, right? So that's obviously going to affect the outcome of your job, okay? So our first thing we wanna do is figure out, well, what, what is the square footage 
of the tile, okay? So seven inches by 20 inches, all right, gives me 140 inches squared, okay? But we can't just use inches squared and feet squared. They have to be in the same unit, okay? So I have 140 inches squared, all right? This works for the imperial units as well as the metric system. So there are 12 inches in one foot, okay? So this is the linear conversion, right? And so then we just square that whole conversion, right? So it becomes everything in here gets squared. So these 12 squared on the bottom. So it's 140 divided by the 12 squared gives me 0 0.972 feet squared. And so it's a little under one square foot for a tile, right? So then if my room is 594 square feet, and there are 0 0.972 square feet per tile, square feet go away, living with how many tiles would that be? And in this case, you would round it off because you're not buying like portions of a tile. So you'd end up with 612 tiles. Okay, so that is it for our unit analysis problems. And we will try to uh, look at some other ones in a later video.